In this programming lesson, you can learn to create custom HTML5 audio analyzer bar graphics that move to the frequency of the sound that is playing by using aspects of the new JavaScript HTML5 audio API. You can customize this tiny script that I'm going to offer any way you like once you grasp the concept. Before we begin the lesson, let's take a look at our finished product so that you can evaluate whether or not you want to stick around for the whole video and get deeper insight about the script. And keep in mind that any animations that you see in my video are going to be slightly more choppy than they are in actual browser software because of my video frame rate. So you would see much more fluid effects when you run this in your environment. Okay. We're going to start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. This way everybody can see the production from the ground up. I'm going to put any CSS for my little application up here in my style element. Any JavaScript is going to go here in my script element and I can always externalize the JavaScript by including it. If so if you want to externalize this JavaScript at any point you can do so. And the same with your CSS. And then we're going to put the little bit of HTML that our application will have right here in the body element. So let's do that first. Let's create a div. Let's go down a couple of lines and close that div. And let's give that div an ID that's equal to mp3 underscore player. And then inside of that div, we're going to have a child div. We're going to give that an ID equal to audio box. And this is where we're going to programmatically add the HTML5 audio element right here inside of this audio box. Now underneath the audio box inside of the MP3 player we're also going to put a canvas element. We're going to give that an ID that's equal to analyzer. And This is where our little animated bars are going to render inside of this canvas element. And let's make sure we close this canvas element. And that is all of the HTML for the application. Now I'm going to pop in some CSS into my style element up top. So you can see the first rule is affecting a div with an ID of mp3 player. That's this guy right here. And we're giving it the following CSS properties. Simple enough. Then we're going into mp3 player, accessing its child div, and then the child audio element that's going to be programmatically placed there using our JavaScript. So we're affecting that audio element, the HTML5 audio element that will be placed right here in this audio box. And we're giving it these properties. Then we're going into the MP3 player container and affecting any canvas elements that are within it. That would be this little guy right here. And we're giving it these properties. Very simple. Now if we take a look at what this simple HTML and CSS gives us, you'll see something like that and it's a centered mp3 player container. You'll see there's no audio element. That's all going to be applied through our JavaScript here. So the first thing in JavaScript is we're going to place a comment in that says create a new instance of an audio object and adjust some of its properties. So here we're going to show a programmatic approach to creating an HTML5 audio element which is creating a new audio object. So we say var audio is equal to new audio object so this audio variable is a new instance of an audio object then we adjust some of its properties by saying audio.source is equal to track1.mp3 that's the sound file that you want to play then we say audio controls is equal to true because we want to see the default audio controls audio.loop is equal to true this way the sound will play over and over again when it reaches the end it will restart all by itself. If you don't want that functionality you just turn true to false. Then audio.autoplay we set to false because we don't want our player to play by itself when the page loads. If you do then you just put true. So if we have properties like this and we render this in our Chrome browser and you guys will want to test this in Chrome because a lot of the JavaScript that we're going to be writing is going to be Chrome specific for now because a lot of HTML5 and new JavaScript APIs and a lot of CSS3 for that matter 
is not yet standardized until 2014 so I recommend that you guys test in Google Chrome for now and then when HTML5 is standardized in all browsers then you can just adjust your code to not have any Chrome prefixes so if we render this in our browser you can see we have a sound our file is playing so really this is a way you could just put background music playing on any any web page those four lines five lines right there now the next thing we're gonna do in our JavaScript is write another comment that says establish all variables that your analyzer will use so I'm gonna establish all of these variables that you see here all these variable names and my script is gonna use those for various things now under that line we're gonna write ourselves another comment that says initialize the mp3 player after the page loads all of its HTML into the window so to do that we simply type in window .add event listener the load event is what we're listening for so when the window is fully loaded with all its HTML we're gonna run the function called init mp3 player which is short for initialize mp3 player and then we use false as the capture state so now we need a function called init mp3 player which initializes our mp3 player so let's pop that function in right now you can see it's sitting right here and I'm gonna explain every line within it so when the window is finished loading all of its HTML this function called init mp3 player is going to run and the first line within it we're going to add the audio element that we programmatically created here to the audio box div sitting on the page so we're saying document get element by ID audio box dot append child the audio element so basically an HTML5 audio element is programmatically going to be placed in this audio box div then the next line we're assigning our context variable and we just make context equal to a new audio context object instance so we're creating a new audio context object instance and that's part of the new JavaScript HTML5 audio API so if you want to really research the new JavaScript audio API you could probably Google the term JavaScript audio API or HTML5 audio API and you'll see all kind of information and you'll also find the audio context object information and we're using that to create our analyzer so the next line we take our analyzer variable and we run the create analyzer method on the context instance and the create analyzer method is an analyzer node then the next line we assign our canvas variable to reference the equal actually we named it analyzer instead of equalizer I was gonna name it equalizer but it doesn't make any sense because it's not an equalizer it represents equalization but or frequency but it's it should be called an analyzer so we say the canvas is equal to this element down here the canvas with an ID of analyzer that way our script knows where to render all of these cool animated bars then we assign the CTX variable to represent the canvas get context method and we pass an argument of 2d or the parameter that we pass is 2d through the get context method for the canvas now the last thing we do when we're initializing the mp3 player in order for it to have these cool animated analyzer bars we're gonna reroute the audio playback into the processing graph of the audio context and up here is where we assigned our audio context object so for our source variable we're gonna say context instance object and we use the create media element source method for the context object and we pass an argument of our audio object so your audio object gets passed through the create media element source method and like I said if any of these methods are boggling your mind you guys can simply go and research the HTML5 audio API which is all still experimental technology until 2014 you can see I'm using WebKit references here that means you should be testing this in Chrome this won't work for you in Firefox or Internet Explorer until 2014 so when those other browsers are respecting the audio API you can then remove this webkit prefix and just call a new audio context object instance 
So you see I have WebKit there just so this works in Chrome for my experiments. And you, you can't complain if it doesn't work in Firefox and Internet Explorer yet because HTML5 and CSS3 and a lot of new JavaScript is not even standardized yet in all the browsers. It, it will be in sometime in 2014, I think. And so far, the only thing in this script that we're using a browser-specific prefix for is this one line right here. So just remember that in the future, you won't need any WebKit prefix there. You won't need a Moz prefix or an MS prefix either. You'll just use the standardized syntax, which is audio context. Okay, so let's finish explaining what the source variable is getting applied to it. So after the source variable is assigned the context.createMediaElementSource method, then we run the connect method on the source. And actually, let's change this element's ID so we don't get confused. Let's call it analyzer render in the canvas. So that canvas element, let's give it an ID of analyzer render. And we'll pass that through right here for the canvas. That way we don't get confused about this analyzer word being here and here as a variable name as well. We'll keep those separate. So in the connect method for the source, we're going to pass the analyzer variable, which is the analyzer node method. Then after that, we use the connect method again on the analyzer variable. And the argument we pass through that connect method is context.destination. And then the last thing in the initialize mp3 player function is we are executing the frame looper function. And that function has not been written into our code yet. We're going to put it right here under the initialize mp3 player function. Okay, now before we put in our frame looper function, let's write a couple of comments into ourselves. Now the frame looper function animates any style of graphics that you wish to the audio frequency. So any style of graphics or whatever you want to animate to the audio frequency can be done within this frame looper function that we're about to put into place. Now this frame looper function is going to be looping at the default frame rate that the browser provides, which will be approximately 60 frames per second or 60 times per second. Now let's go ahead and pop in our frame looper function and I'll explain every line within it. Now remember that every line within this frame looper function is going to be running many, 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 many times per second. Very, very fast. And the reason why it does that is because we're running the request animation frame method on the window object. So this little bit of JavaScript pretty much gives you a looping function. And in the past we used to use set timeout and set interval to have looping functions for animation purposes. But now it's recommended that we use the request animation frame method instead of set interval and set timeout when we want to animate things on a web page if we need a looping function. But a lot of animations can now be uh, rendered through CSS3 transition, so you wouldn't even need a looping function for a lot of animations. But for this particular animation, and the sound programming that we're doing requires that we have a looping function. So I just named it frame looper. And this line here is what's responsible for making it loop over and over and over and over again. Now the next line here is we're acquiring an array that's a new instance of a uint eight array object. And we're passing as an argument through that analyzer dot frequency bin count. So basically you'll get an array that is a representation of the data of the sound frequency. Then we take our analyzer variable again and we run the get byte frequency data method on it and we're passing the FBC array through that method. Now these two lines deal with clearing your canvas every time this function loops and setting the color of your bars. So if you want to change your bars to yellow or red or whatever color you want, you do it right there. It's very simple. This line, like I said, it pretty much just clears the whole canvas. And then this variable bars is set to 100 because I wanted 100 bars to render. Now this little loop will render those 100 bars at different little heights many, many, many times per second. Every time this function loops on itself. So every time frame looper function runs, which is many, 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 many times per second is going to be a hundred bars rendered at different heights many, 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 many times per second. 
So basically this for loop is going to run 100 times. And that happens so many times per second that it's mind boggling. That's how you get the nice dancing animated effect. So for each bar that's being rendered in this loop, you want to give each one a different X position within the canvas because otherwise they'll be all stacked on top of each other along the horizontal plane. So what we do is we take the I variable and you can see that the first time this loop runs I is going to be equal to zero. So basically this equation will say bar X is equal to zero times three. Then the next time this loop runs this will be a one this I and basically the last time it runs it'll be a 99 this equation will say bar X is equal to 99 times 3 and that just allows you to space your bars so they're not sitting on top of each other and you can change these numbers play with these things and see what effect you get now the bar width each bar is going to be two pixels in width and the bar height is really what makes those bars dance up and down so what we do is we take the frequency data for this particular index in the FBC array and we divide it by 2 and we want that to be a negative number the outcome of that equation to be a negative number so we put a minus before that equation and then we run the fill rect method in the canvas and basically that draws all of your bars it draws each bar so each of the 100 bars is drawn by this fill rect method and I put a little comment in here for you that says fill rect takes these four parameters. You put the bars x position, basically the rectangle that you're drawing, its x position, its y position, its width, and its height. And you can see the variables that we're setting in place for those four parameters right there. Now since we're using WebKit prefixes for now and it's not 2014 yet, we're going to test this in the Google Chrome browser. So let's render this in Google Chrome. We get nice results. And yours would run a lot smoother in your browser environment. Mine, my animation might look a little choppy just in my video tutorial because of the frame rate. So when you, basically when you run all of this in your browser, you're going to see how smooth it is. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys get some insight into how you can create cool little analyzer bar graphics. And I'm going to show different kind of graphics that can be created in different styles of sound analyzers that you can connect to your MP3 players. And there's going to be a lot more tutorials coming from my channel about audio programming for HTML5 and JavaScript because there's really so much you can do. There's so much software you can create that will run online. DJ software, drum machines, tracking software like Audacity. That kind of software could be made using HTML5 and JavaScript and run online. People can record music directly online. Your server can suck it right up.